So yesterday was WWDC 2021 keynote and there was a ton of stuff announced. Nothing like in your face, earth changing stuff, but a lot of little things to glue everything across the entire platform. Better continuity, better ease of use across the entire ecosystem. I have a lot of thoughts about iPad OS, which I'll talk about in another video, but the one area that got me the most excited was Mac OS. I actually installed the developer preview on my computer. The next version is called Monterey, if you haven't heard already. And I wanna walk you through some of my favorite things that I think you guys are gonna find super interesting. The first thing is shortcuts, and you've seen this with iOS 14. Basically, you can create these little automated tasks to help further improve your life. If you go into the Shortcuts app, it looks a lot like the version that's on iOS, but you have some pre-installed shortcuts that you can begin to use right away. Apple, for example, installs one for photos where you can take a bunch of your favorite photos and turn it into a GIF. If you don't like any of the pre-installed ones, you can create your own. You can get like super detailed with this and create some crazy stuff. You can automate your calendar. You can automate your lights to do things that the app itself doesn't have the functionality to do. That's the beauty of this. You can get super crazy depending on how much time you want to invest in this. The next cool feature is Quick Note, and this is available across the iPhone, iPad OS, and even Mac OS, but I was using it on Mac OS, and it works very well. You bring your mouse to the bottom right-hand corner of the screen, and a little box pops up, black if you're using dark mode, and white if you're using light mode. It's really handy because it's quick, you know? Let's say you're on a phone call and you wanna quickly jot something down, you can do it right away. Before that, I had to like look for some sort of area on my screen to quickly write down some text, and usually it's like in the browser bar because I'm like right in the heat of the call. With that being available right there, it just makes your life a lot easier. It's cool because like you can be looking at a website, copying some text, you put it into Quick Note, then open up your iPhone and continue where you left off. All these notes are saved inside of Apple Notes, so no matter which device you're using, you can always access it. The next one is Focus, and again, this too is across the board. Doesn't matter which device you're using, and this is basically notification triage. When you first tap on Focus, it gives you some pre-defined use cases. Personal, do not disturb, and work and you can fine tune these to basically allow certain types of notifications coming in. So for personal, maybe I wanna block out all my work notifications because it's the weekend. If it's work, maybe I wanna block out anything that's personally related. Maybe I don't want my friends to be able to message me during work hours. And do not disturb, you can block out whatever you want. You can block out everybody, but maybe only allow emergency contacts. Now you don't have to do this by contact. You can do this by app, you can do this by location. So if you really wanna be truly crazy with it, you can set it up so that when the phone knows you're at your office, it'll automatically switch to the focus work profile. And then when you're back at home, it'll automatically switch to the focus personal profile. FaceTime got some big improvements. They're making it a lot more like Zoom. And look, if you're in the iOS world and you use FaceTime a lot, you're gonna like this because they're introducing a new feature called SharePlay. SharePlay is cool because you can share a video with someone and watch together. You can share a website with someone and look at it together. Same with photos and music, the list goes on. Now, you both need to be subscribed to the same service. So if I wanna share a Disney video with you, let's say we wanna watch a movie together on Disney Plus, they too have to be subscribed to Disney Plus. So for those of you out there thinking you can start pirating movies and letting your friends watch it, that ain't gonna happen. The other thing is anyone can join the FaceTime call. They no longer need to be specific to iPhone. So if your buddy's on an Android device, they can get a created link from your FaceTime app and they can click on it and they can be loaded up in a web browser. It's not as fancy or as nice looking as using the FaceTime app, but at least other individuals who are not part of the Apple ecosystem can, can join in and take part in what's being shared. Then there's AirPlay. Finally coming to the MacBook Pro, MacBook Air, iMac, all those devices you can never AirPlay to. They could AirPlay to other things, but you can finally AirPlay to them. And that's huge, right? Maybe you're someone who doesn't have an Apple TV, you're doing the little Apple fitness at home, you're, you're losing the weight, and you've been watching on your tiny little phone screen. Well, now you can 
airplay it to your MacBook Pro or iMac and use that bigger screen to do, do your Apple fitness. Now I did try this with Disney Plus to see if it would work and it doesn't, not because I don't think the feature is broken or anything, just probably because Disney Plus hasn't updated their code, whereas Apple has updated their own personal apps. Live text is another cool feature. And again, yes, this is available across the board, but it's pretty cool. You know, think Google Lens, but for your Mac, right? You have a picture, there's a lot of text on it, and you wanna be able to copy and paste it into your document. You use the live text feature, it will take all of that text and you can copy and paste it into that document. You could even do things like visually look it up. So if it's some sort of image of relevance or if it's a street name in a city, you can visually look it up and it'll tell you exactly where that picture was taken or where that restaurant is located and if there's any other similar restaurants in your neighborhood. It's also compiled with a translate feature. So if you're reading a picture that has Spanish in it or any other language, you can use the translate feature to basically break it down in English so you can figure out exactly what it says. Now my favorite feature, the one I was most excited about is universal control and unfortunately it's not available to review in the first developer preview that it's available. It's coming out on a later date, but my God, that thing looks awesome. Basically, you can use your iMac or MacBook Pro or MacBook Air keyboard and mouse to control your iPad. If you put your iPad beside your desktop computer or MacBook Pro, it will know that it's there. And if you move your mouse over past the MacBook Pro screen, it'll automatically go on the iPad screen and you can control the desktop. Same with typing too. This is a great way to use your iPad if you don't have a keyboard connected to it. But it doesn't end there. You can also do other stuff. Like if you wanna transfer a file between your iPad and your MacBook, usually you'd have to do it through AirDrop. Well, you can just drag it now, right? So if there's a file in your iPad that you wanna put on your MacBook Pro desktop, you can just drag it across screens, which is super powerful. Now I know there's other applications out there that have done this already, like Synergy, but again, this is baked right into the operating system. It's not something you have to download, install, and it's just ready to go. And the last big update is to Safari. Personally, I don't use it just because I need those extensions that Chrome and Microsoft Edge provide. But if you are a Safari user, you will appreciate the visual updates. It just looks really good, you know? Like, I love the way Safari looks. The tabs are nice and rounded, it looks minimalistic, there's less bloat on the top. You can kind of preview each tab by moving your mouse over. But the big introduction this year was the ability to do groups of tabs or tab groups. So for example, if I'm visiting the same three news websites every single morning, instead of manually typing them in, I can just go to the tab group that I created and it'll automatically pop them up. This saves you time and it also reduces the amount of tabs that you always have open. The visual changes are nice. For example, if you're on Twitter, which is more of a blue themed website, the top pane of Safari will change to the color of blue too to match the website. This just gives your eyes a better focus and it makes the experience feel more Twitter-like rather than let's say Twitter inside of a browser. So that wraps up my first look at Mac OS Monterey. If I missed anything or you think there's anything else cool that you want me to visit, let me know in the comment section down below, but I'm mostly excited for universal control. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one.